Jeff Santoro, a stock that you and I both have followed and covered for a while. We both own some up almost 50% this year. It's Shopify. There's a lot of investors looking at that stock, asking themselves if they waited too long to buy. I don't think that you and I necessarily agree that that's the case. We got some stuff to talk about here. You ready to go through the details with me on it? Let's do it. Awesome. I'm Jason Hall. This is The Smattering. And our videos are sponsored by The Motley Fool. If you're looking for even more great stock ideas than the one we're going to talk about now, go to our special link, fool.com forward slash The Smattering. The Motley Fool is going to give you its 10 best stocks to buy right now. Be sure to check that link out after you watch this video. Okay, Jeff. So again, stocks up 50% so far this year. A lot's going on with Shopify. Just the basics of the business, what this is, Shopify's kind of the core business is this is the platform behind so much independent e-commerce, behind so much non-Amazon e-commerce is probably the best way to put it. Whether you're a small retailer, whether you have a web store, even a lot of manufacturers and other businesses that have an omni-channel presence have come to Shopify to drive their e-commerce. And it's more than just the website. It's the back end that manages the inventory, processing payments, their shop pay system that they offer that can make it a lot easier for buyers to help them be more sticky. It's a really, really deep platform of services that they offer. What's going on that's, that's caused the stock to move up so much? And, and where do you stand on it right now? Well, I was surprised when you said it's up 50% on the year because it's still down in my portfolio because I bought it when it was really flying high during the, the crazy time after the pandemic. What's interesting when I looked at the, my, my spreadsheet of all the results here and looked at the last quarter, which was almost three months ago at this point when it was reported, so many companies we saw back when in Q2 earnings seasons were seeing their year-over-year -year revenue growth and other metrics slowly declining. Now, some of these companies were declining from ridiculous amounts like 60, 70, 80% down to still respectable amounts like 30 and 40%. But Shopify actually is heading in the other direction. So just looking at the beginning of 2022, Q1 of 22, their year over year revenue growth was 22%. And in this, the last quarter that got reported, the one ending in June of this year, 31%. So they're seeing their revenue growth actually, year over year revenue growth actually accelerate, which is the opposite of what we've seen with so many other companies that we've done videos about and we talk about. And when you look at the specific things that I track for this company, so subscription solutions revenue and merchant solutions revenue, both up 21%, 35% respectively, we haven't seen that level of year over year growth in almost a couple of years now. Same thing on the gross profit side of the, of the equation. 26 and 27% growth year over year. Again, we haven't, that's been single digits for much of the last year plus. Gross merchandise volume was up 17%. Gross payment volume was up 27%. And again, these are all numbers that are accelerating from previous quarters. So all of their trends are heading in the right direction. So you, you it makes sense now the the up 50% over the past year, I think some people are coming around to that. I know in the last quarter, it looked like they had a really bad um, net loss and operating loss, but that was due to the impairment charge for their logistics business, which now you're going to talk about. So all in all, like the big picture seems to be like they're heading back in the right direction. Yeah, I want to. I'm going to highlight before I talk about the selling the logistics business to Flexport. I want to talk through a couple of the things that you mentioned. Number one, yeah, look at the stock price. It's still as much as it's up 50 percent this year. It's still down almost 70 percent from the high. This is a stock back in 2020. Once the pandemic really started ramping up. And through 2020, 2021, this is a stock that just absolutely went bonkers for two reasons. Number one, so many sellers went to Shopify because, well, in-person retail kind of disappeared for the better part of a year in a lot of the world, particularly in North America. And they were able to leverage this platform and quickly get up and running. So a lot of, a lot of sellers, merchants went to Shopify and it was great for the company. Investors saw that. And we're looking forward and predicting this massive future for Shopify and bid the stock up, frankly, to some pretty lofty valuations for quite some time. And then a couple of things happened along the way. Number one, we saw the kind of the, the tech SaaS cloud services, internet company services bubble kind of popped a little bit. And, and that played a big role in Shopify stock price coming down. But two other things also happened, Jeff. Number one, we did start to see some decelerization in those revenue growth rates and those other KPIs that you were highlighting. It went through a period where growth did slow. It was still growing, but growth slowed. 
And at the same time, Toby Luca, the CEO, who I'm a huge fan of, is one of the one of the founders of the business. I'm a huge fan of Toby. Made the decision to really lean into being a fully integrated services provider for their customers, their sellers, and that included standing up and building out a logistics business. Now, on surface, that sounds like a great idea, and I was in support of it because, again, if you're going to try to be an alternative for Amazon, you need to have the full suite of offerings. Almost like the the Taiwan semiconductor for the uh, semiconductor industry, where you're you're going to do everything your customers need, but you're not going to compete against them, which is the big knock against Amazon. It's being sued right now uh, by the federal government because of anti-competitive behavior. So it was a great idea. The problem is that the logistics business, particularly as you're building it up, is very very expensive, and it would make a massive change in the margin profile of a company like Shopify. This services based high margin, light asset. Most of their assets, of course, again, are IP. It doesn't have the higher fixed costs that you get when you're running a warehouse and you're driving trucks all over the, the country. So adding, bolding that onto the business, a lot of investors were very negative on that. So the two things combined, the negativity around shifting its business from what it was really good at to bolting on a logistics business, combine that with kind of the popping of that, of that bubble of, of valuations really brought the stock down a tremendous amount, especially when you combine that with, again, the slowing of the revenue growth rates. Now, fast forward to, to more recently, a couple of things have happened. The company got really, really lean, did a tremendous amount of, of restructuring and reducing headcount. Don't, I don't like talking about people losing their job as a positive thing, but the company certainly got probably too big for its current operations in terms of it's headcount. So they did reduce headcount pretty substantially, starting to get more lean and efficient. Luki made the decision to exit the logistics business very quickly. Basically, like a year after they made the commitment to do it, they, they reached the deal to sell it to Flex Support. And here's the thing. I think a lot of people, Jeff, don't consider this aspect of that decision that they made. Interest rates were starting to accelerate and starting to go up when they made the decision to sell it off. When they made the decision to do it, to, to stand it up, interest rates were still pretty low. So cost of capital was advantageous. I'm fairly certain that management said, this is going to be way too expensive. The amount of debt that we would need to, to take on or equity that we would need to sell on the secondary market to raise money, this doesn't make sense for us to do it. Let's partner with somebody like Flexport that's also competing with the Amazons of the world and have a partnership so they made that decision. A lot of the investors who were concerned about their decision to pivot away from or to pivot to kind of lean into that are, are coming back because it, it's the business that the initial thesis that so many investors liked, it's back to that core thesis. And then, Jeff, you were talking about the reacceleration of those KPIs, the revenue metrics, the, the, the revenue of their, of their the, the gross merchandise volume number, I think is really important. That means that their sellers are selling more stuff. And then the other numbers there that are the, the revenues that Shopify is getting from the merchants, that those are real accelerating, means that the merchants are still seeing value. This was not a COVID play, that post-COVID, this is a business with some real legs and some real long-term potential. So take all of those things and put them together, Jeff, thinking about the valuation of the stock today, where it stands. Do you think people have, have missed the opportunity? Do you think now is a good time, still a good time to buy Shopify stock? I don't think they've missed it. As you said, it, it, it's still way down off its highs. I don't know that I would call it cheap. It's still trading in the teens for price to sales. So, but I think getting back to their core business, like kind of their roots and, you know, not for nothing, I'm sure they also looked at Amazon and looked at how they're still trying to dig out of the logistics hole that they dug for themselves during the pandemic as they tried to meet demand and, and, and probably saw the writing on, on the wall for themselves. Yeah, they're back to being cash cash flow positive, which is good too. So no, I don't think investors have missed the boat. I don't know that I would back up the truck right now. I think I want to see a few more quarters of these year-over-year growth, -year growth metrics heading in that positive direction, but I don't think anyone has missed the boat on this stock.